Hey, it's Aaron with IP Exchange. We're here at the IP Exchange studios for our first IPX tutorial um, with David from Robustel. So, uh, David, what do you do at Robustel? Uh, I'm the global IoT solution architect for Robustel, um, working on all sorts of interesting IoT products and projects around the world. Cool, like this one here? Like the R1520LG, yes. Cool, so we are going to show you uh, what this universal LoRa gateway looks like when you plug it in. And as you can see, it's already plugged in via ethernet to Jake's laptop. But um, yes, here is an interface. David, what is going on? Good question. Um, so like all of Robustel's products, there's a very simple um, intuitive GUI uh, that you can use. You'll see here we've changed the default IP address from 192.168.0.1, which is common to all Robustel's products. And so we're on 0 0.30, and this is the main um, operating system for the R1520LG. Cool. Laura Gateway. So I guess, I mean, it's just a case of you plug it in via Ethernet and then Correct. type that in in Chrome or whatever your favorite browser is, and, and you're, you're into yep. this. Cool. Patch lead. Yeah username and password mm. to the right IP address, the usual shenanigans in Windows to uh, either get a DHCP address or mm. put in a fixed one, and away you go. Cool, so um, we did a previous video explaining uh, this little guy in full detail, but in, in a few words, what would you describe um, as a, a key use case for this uh, universal gateway? Uh, Many, many use cases, but in, for LoRaWAN in particular at the moment, we're seeing um, a massive uptake in the building management system market, which kind of correlates to energy, you know, where energy is being used um, for, for the obvious reasons that uh, <laughs> energy is doubled in cost and people want to save, save their money. Nice. So um, I can see there's quite a few things down the left hand side here. Uh, what do you think is the first? place that people will need to go to to get their, their kind of system running? So I think the probably the best place to start is mm. um, generally uh, a gateway needs a connection to the internet, yes. to, the yeah. outs, to the outside world. Um, we need to connect to Laura, um, to Robustel's um, router management platform and you'll very likely need to connect to an LNS, LoRaWAN network server, okay. such as those that are provided by Lorit or um, TTI. Uh, very popular examples. Um, it can all be done locally, but without further ado, let's just show yeah. the uh, WAN interface. Okay. So here we have um, a choice of interfaces, 4G, 5G, um, Wi-Fi, or Ethernet. And you okay. can order them in any way, you can load balance, you can do all sorts of things, but fundamentally most uh, customers are gonna use 4G as a primary, or possibly Wi-Fi as primary with 4G backup. Okay. I, I would say they're probably the most likely uh, use cases, but any any conceivable way um, is possible. Okay. Um, and I can see there's a VPN bit here. So um, yeah, how would you, how would you use that in the application? So um, it. Probably wouldn't be used in the most LoRa uh, applications. You know, security is built in mm -hmm. um, in in everything that we've described so far. But um, uh, I know some people choose to use the UDP um, forwarder uh, for LoRa One, and they they wrap that in OpenVPN. Okay. Um, so, yeah, OpenVPN is a very common um, thing that we would um, we would use on any of um, Robustel's gateways. So what, um, what can you see in the interface section of this? So probably the most important thing in interface, um, all of the usual mm -hmm. settings that you would expect for, for standard hardware interfaces, mm -hmm. but uh, in this section down here, uh, you can configure your SIM cards and that includes uh, APN settings. Um, so in there would be SIM 1 and in there would be SIM 2. So it runs two SIM slots. And whilst the product um, does automatically choose an APN for mainstream providers for specialist IoT sims you, you would generally need to put in a fixed the, the correct APN settings manually. Okay and um, what's bridge here? Uh, the bridge is pretty much just the uh, the switch the Ethernet interface. Oh okay. okay. 
So how would you go about um, adding yourself to a lower R1 network? So all of the um, LoRa specific mm -hmm. um, information is in this section. And we've really gone for ease of use. Mm -hmm. So we can see one of the barriers to adoption for LoRa 1 is um, the complexity. Okay. Setting up a gateway, a sensor, a gateway, a, a LNS typically in the cloud, a LoRaWAN network server in the cloud, and then outputting application data from that to an application server is a massive. Uh, it's very easy to write on an IoT diagram, but it's actually a lot to think about, especially if you include um, 4G networks and maybe using roaming sims as well. So um, we've really tried to go for ease of use. So you can literally follow the flow here. So LoRa settings, first decision you make embedded network server or external network mm -hmm. server. Nice and simple. If you choose external network server, which many people do, then you just need to choose the packet folder that you're going to use to reach the uh, LoRaWAN network server. Mm -hmm. So it could be the UDP folder, it could be basic station, and shortly we'll have a dedicated Laureate um, adapter. Okay. So all the, all the stuff you would expect from external, um, a, an external network server. If you select embedded, um, then you have another menu, and this, okay. in essence, is managing the onboard chirp stack mm. instance. And very simply, you can click there, and you can open chirp oh. stack. Okay. Um, so what are we what are we seeing here, and um, how would you like show where devices are, etc. So. Um, the industry standard network server um, uh, installed directly and the device itself, you can see mm. it's running at 88 uh, on the IP address mm. colon 8080. So okay. it's really nice. You've got the, the router OS and the chirp stack um, implementation all sitting uh, running as services on the same box. Now, we certainly know there's plenty of chirp stack experts out there mm -hmm. and they would be able to configure absolutely everything. Uh, in this view, um, and that's not a new thing, but what is quite nice is we've taken some of the most important settings from Chirp Stack and we put device profiles, gateways and applications, and devices um, just locally in the operating system. And that one of the implications of that is we can update it from our cloud platform so mm -hmm. you, can, you can mass deploy um, parameters relating to your um, LoRa sensors and uh, you know, the provisioning, in essence. Cool, uh, can we see that cloud platform? Uh, we can, but there's just one other quick thing mm. to share okay. um, before we, we go on to that. If you use the embedded network server, ChirpStack, uh -huh. um, there is actually a, something completely unique to Robustel. It doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, and it's a wonderful, amalgamation of LoRaWAN with a chirp stack server on board and Robustel's existing edge to cloud software. Okay. Which is designed to make customers' lives easy and the simplest way is to show it. So we can configure reading Modbus devices, so Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP. We can listen for our chirp stack chirps um, coming in on LoRa. We pass them up through the broker, the edge to cloud broker. No, okay. That's not MQTT, it's a different type of broker. It doesn't really matter, but the important thing is that you can actually store to flash. So if you lose your 4G connection, you can buffer your Modbus and your LoRaWAN data um, on board. And then when the connection reestablishes, you can then carry on sending. And that's actually, it's a subtle but really important thing because LoRaWAN doesn't um, in the protocol itself doesn't lend itself very well to that yeah. kind of buffering at the edge. And then once we've passed it out through the broker, you've then got options of MQTT mm -hmm. um, directly into Azure IoT Hub or uh, AWS's um, IoT environment. And so what we're saying is we can do anything Modbus, anything LoRa, buffered on the device, so data logged, and then pass it into any cloud platform as JSON data and with zero coding, no software whatsoever. Madness. Uh, so out of interest, how much data can you 
can you buffer? So, in this modern generation of product, the Debian-based devices, that's eight gig of flash, of which oh, so. we only commit about one, uh, one gigabyte of usage. So, uh, you know, it's a, a huge potential weeks, months of storage, given that these are relatively small ASCII yeah. um, packets. Wow. So can you show us the cloud platform that comes with uh, this router? Absolutely. So all of Robustel's devices have a, a construct called RCMS, Robustel mm -hmm. Cloud Management System. Okay. Um, it's been going for about five years, all based in Microsoft Azure IoT Hub, and it's just getting better and better mm -hmm. uh, by the year. And, it, and it's a really, really important part of the narrative with the R1520 LG gateway. The gateway's very, a very good piece of hardware, but the new operations console in the cloud platform um, really allows you to manage estates of gateways at scale. Okay. Um, so it's the RCMS um, environment. You just need to make sure that's enabled to make sure those little MQTT packets are making their way to our cloud platform. And then if we visit rcms-cloud.robustel.net. So this is the cloud platform, mm -hmm. as we said, all based in Microsoft Azure. We've got over 100,000 devices online okay. now, um, all securely hosted. I'd need to use another account. So you see it's all backed off onto Microsoft's mm -hmm. uh, as Active Directory environment. So lots of positive cyber security uh, connotations from that. And we just put in the password. Ignore all the prompts. Change to the account we want to use. And probably this is the best opening gambit. Let's just reduce that down a little. So this is what I was waiting for, for the whole demo to see that map again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is, there are many things in here, but mm. I think the, the, the easiest way to give um, potential R1520 LG users uh, just a, a succinct summary mm. of the cloud platform is to actually show operations console. This yeah. is where we, we take all the data and we distill it down and try and make it really easy to manage. Um, potentially some of our customers will have thousands of gateways uh, all around the world mm. uh, and managing estates like that with associated SIM cards at scale is, is challenging. So lots of the things here like the data usage, that's a rolling 30 days, the average uptime, that's a rolling 30 days mm -hmm. and there is also an installation um, section okay. that allows you to um, see everything that's happened. Everyone loves a good map so um, you can, this is cell triangulation based mm -hmm. so you don't have to type anything in you can see um, automatically a course location for all your devices. Um, there is a, a section for provisioning devices, which is very administrative, but it's becoming a big part of the cost mm. of managing these things. The installation section allows you to register in stores, manage assets on site. Um, tech support, the goal here is to put everything that could be used for, such as uh, a diagnostics check, LED, flashing the LED to make sure the installer's at the right site. Mm. Easy remote access, just um, can generate a hyperlink straight in, um, sending text messages. Um, oh, cool. Running a Wireshark trace, um, so if there's any application problems uh, with a packet folder. And also a speed test to just give you an okay. idea whether available bandwidth is is uh, contributing to any issues. The commercial section uh, carries an overview of everything, um, shows you data usage. Um, maybe there's a problem with this device, we use too much data on one day. There's a, there's a quick and simple view of it. And uptime is another important commercial metric. The device is at 100%, we probably don't need to worry about the ones at 45%. Mm -hmm. We do. And the icing on the cake, in this view, in the estate log, everything that is happening in your estate 
um, that you subscribe to as, a, as an event of interest, okay. like online, offline, someone's changed a SIM card, it's failed over um, from Wi-Fi to 4G, they just appear there in the log in real time. So making real time management of hundreds or thousands of cool. gateways infinitely easy. Nice, so I guess the key difference between the web manager and the cloud management service is, is, is the cloud management service where you kind of manage the, the deployment aspect and the, the web manager is where you manage kind of the configuration aspect. Absolutely, yeah. Cool. So you probably set up a mm. device once mm. and then you would capture the config file, put it onto, um, onto the platform and then once you have your config file, you can upload the config, you can view the config um, and most importantly using device templates you can bulk deploy um, applications and configuration and configs um, over the air. Cool. And uh, in terms of when you're uh, connecting devices to like a single router, which which one would you do that in? Would that be in the, the web manager or the cloud manager or uh, something above that? So, if we are talking about Modbus devices, mm -hmm. uh, we can um, we can do everything to do with Modbus point tables um, and manage that from the cloud, from the top down entirely. Okay. Um, typically for the LoRa side of things, because a lot of the time the data, the config for the sensors actually needs to go into the LoRaWAN network yeah. server, um, you'll typically do that through this um, through this interface. Okay. But there will be tours, that is V2, there'll be a tour to deploy when you are using the onboard LNS to deploy. Um, let's just show you. So when you when you are using the embedded network server, mm. which I think will probably be the minority, but device pro or files, gateways, applications and devices. Oh, okay. So. Um, this will be the, the place where you can um, add your, your LoRa sensors. Cool. So that was Robustel's Universal LoRa on Gateway in action. And if you'd like to evaluate this technology, apply through IP Exchange. Hey, where my engineers at?